We can make our rebuild a whole lot cheaper if we don't have to buy diesel to run our generator for electricity. Getting the solar panels up and running is just the way to do that. My name is Gijs and this is my dad. And this is Schooner Tijgerari. We have recently started a major rebuild to get her ready for new adventures. And we're sharing the process with you. Subscribe to stay tuned. Over the past few weeks, we've been installing the complete solar system on the ship. And I'll cover all the aspects of the installation in this video. In case some of you are considering installing or are currently in the process of installing a similar system. There's quite a lot of numbers involved. So apologies in advance if you're not interested in those details. But you can just watch the video without listening to me rambling on about the details. The brains of this system is the Victron Easy Solar 2 GX, which is a combination of a multi plus 2 inverter and charger combi and a smart solar MPPT solar charge controller. And these two systems talk to each other via the internal GX communication center. Schematically, that looks something like this. We've chosen this all-in-one solution because our old battery charger was faulty and there was no inverter on board and we needed a solar charge controller anyway. Having it all in one casing saves a lot of space, installation work, wiring and it's already set up to work properly without me having to program anything. It also communicates with the BNG glass helm bridge system, so we can monitor everything from the bridge. But I'll make a separate video on that when all the bridge equipment arrives. I already installed the Easy Solar a few months ago so that we could use some power tools without the generator running constantly as we don't have shore power on this bird. Because it's quite a high current system, to reduce the resistance from the cables, Victron recommends using 50 square millimeter cables, so I went with 95, because a thicker cable has never done any harm. It has to be installed as close to the batteries as possible, so that the cables are short, minimizing the resistance from the cable. That place would be just above the batteries on the location of the old battery charger. For that, we have to make a new backplate. The particular model that we are using is the 24 3000 70 32. And here's what all these numbers mean. 24 is for the 24 volts in our batteries. On modern builds these days, it's quite common to use 48 volts in the batteries. We've chosen not to do that because almost the whole ship is running on 24 volts. And by that I mean main engine starter and alternator, pumps, navigational lights, normal lights and most bridge systems. Going for 48 volts would mean we could have the current running through the cables and consequently use thinner cables. But it would also mean complicating our electrical system with another voltage as we already have 230 volts AC, 380 volts AC, 12 volts DC, 24 volts DC and 250 volts DC from the solar panels. The 3000 stands for 3000 volt amps, which is the power of the inverter and translates to around 2400 watts. So we can use appliances up to 2400 watts using only battery power. The 70 is for 70 amps, the maximum DC current that the battery charger can stuff into the battery. And the 32 is for 32 amps, the maximum AC current that can run through the system from shore supply to charge the batteries and supply the ship.
Okay, now we can have a look at the solar panels. Anyone who watched earlier videos may know I've been looking for flexible solar panels to cover the complete roof of the wheelhouse. I've heard stories from some of you with good experience and from some of you with very bad experiences. In the end, it probably comes down to how much you are willing to spend. Eventually, I based my decision on the following two points. The size of walkable solar panels is generally quite small. The high quality panels that I am able to get here in the Netherlands do not get much bigger than 100 watts. Whereas rigid panels get as big as 500 watts. Meaning we would have 5 times more cables and connectors on deck that we have to cover up somehow. The price of a 100 watt walkable solar panel is about one and a half times as high as a 500 watt rigid solar panel. Meaning we would have to pay seven and a half times as much for the same amount of energy. So we bought five of the biggest solar panels we could find, giving us a peak power of 2500 watts. The downside of not having walkable panels is that we cannot completely cover the roof of the wheelhouse because we still need to walk there. So instead, we are creating a frame that will replace the frame for the sunshade on the poop deck and make a permanent sunshade with three solar panels on top. We do have to put a ceiling underneath the panels to prevent stormy winds catching the panels from the bottom and ripping them off. And to work away the electrical cables. For this we're using concrete plywood, which is lightweight and waterproof due to an epoxy layer on both sides of the wood. With the frame finished, we can install it on the ship. On the frame, we can straight away install a new boom gallows, as the old one was removed a few months ago. Now we can also remove the old sunshade frame from the poop deck. Some of you suggested we made hinged solar panels, but we decided that the fixed solution was less fragile and since we have the space we might as well use it. The concrete plywood is by itself waterproof, but we choose to paint the underside white to have a nice and light space around the wheel and the compass. To free up the cable tray above the ceiling in the saloon, we started removing a part of the bulkhead separating the saloon from the aft cabin, which we planned to get rid of anyway to create a nice open space. Now we can install the panels. 
Just on a quick note, I received quite some education in electrical installation, although I'm not a certified electrician. So we'll have the system checked by a professional. All I want to say is, if you don't know what you're doing, don't do it yourself. Electricity can be quite dangerous. On the sunshade, the mounts for the solar panels are directly bolted to the frame. But we don't want to drill holes in the roof of the wheelhouse, so we're gluing the corner mounts to deck using high-tech adhesive. On sunny days like this one, the panels deliver around 8 kilowatt hours of energy every day. But since we're not using that much power right now, the batteries are full and the panels are just keeping them topped up. On the plus side, we don't have to use diesel anymore for electricity for the rest of the rebuild. And it makes us wonder what we can do with all this extra energy if we had a big enough battery to store it all. You may have noticed us running around in Tiger Shark Boatworks t-shirts. And we're about to order the third batch already. Because all of our friends and family are walking around in them as well. Is this something you guys would be interested in? If so, I will look into creating a webshop for merchandise. I haven't set up a Patreon because I don't think people would be interested. But with a t-shirt, you can support our project and get something in return as well. But let me know what you think. Meanwhile, we're still doing some work on the new dinghy. Mom has been very kind to remake the old sails to fit on the boat. And after some adjustments, they are looking pretty tight. The Davids have gotten some gusset plates to make them stop bouncing when lowering the dinghy in the water. And it's currently at the sailmaker who is making a storage cover for the boat. That's all for now. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.